and welcome to Dove Biology. I'm Mr. Dove, and in this video, we'll be exploring fungi. Fungi is a diverse kingdom which shares many characteristics. All fungi are eukaryotic, which means that they have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. All fungi are heterotrophic, which means they need to absorb their nutrients from their surroundings. They can be either saprophytic or perhaps even parasitic. Saprophytic fungi feed on dead material while pederacetic fungi will feed on living material, like, for example, the um, athlete's foot fungus that feeds on live tissue. Now, most of our fungi are multicellular, but some, like the yeast, are actually unicellular. All fungi are going to contain cell walls, and the cell walls will be made of the polysaccharide chitin. Now, the majority of our fungi are actually microscopic, and they will include, like, our molds and our yeast. Fungi, because of their shared DNA with animals and uh, protist relatives, are going to form the apistacont clade. Looking at that same DNA, though, we find that fungi and animals are actually more closely related to each other than they are to plants or other eukaryotes. The body of fungi are made up of filaments called hyphae. The hyphae are divided into a mat of individual uh, interwoven cells called mycelium. The mycelium is going to maximize the surface area to volume ratios, making feeding very efficient. In fact, one cubic centimeter of soil may have as much as one kilometer of mycelium in it. The hyphae of most fungi have additional cell walls called cross walls that divide the long filaments into many end-to-end -end cells. The cross walls of these fungi will have septa, which will allow for cytoplasm and other cell parts to move between the cells and to help the fungus to distribute nutrients from one part of the body to another. Synesthetic fungi actually lack septa and have a continuous cytoplasmic mass with hundreds or perhaps even thousands of nuclei. The reason for this is because of a repeated cell division of the nucleus as a result of mitosis without cytokinesis. Remember, cytokinesis allows for the separation of the cytoplasm, so we have, you know, unique individual cells. So despite the mitosis, we're not having the uh, cytokinesis here, and so it's just a whole bunch of uh, nuclei sharing the same cytoplasm. Now, some unique fungi have specialized hyphae called haustoria, which allow them to penetrate the tissues of their host or maybe even exchange nutrients with their plant hosts. For example, the mycorrhizae fungi can improve the delivery of phosphate ions and other minerals to a plant um, because the mycorrhizae um, and the mycelium they have allows them to absorb so much more phosphorus from their environment, and then that way they're able to then provide that and share that with their plant host using their hastaria. Now, in terms of reproduction, most fungi will have both a sexual and asexual stage within their life, and they'll reproduce through various types of spores. Yeast, on the other hand, because of being unicellular, they'll reproduce through a form of mitosis which we call budding. Sexual reproduction in fungi is quite unique. Most fungi are actually haploid throughout their life cycle. Hyphae of different mating types, instead of male or female, we consider them plus or minus, are going to fuse, and they're going to give rise to specialized structures that can produce spores, which will then be diploid. This process is called conjugation. The spores that are produced sexually, called zygospores, are going to have a greater genetic diversity, which is going to be, allow them to perhaps be better adapted to diverse environments. Let's take a look at a general overview of the reproductive cycles, both sexual and asexual, in fungus. Both cycles will uh, start with our mycelium, which are reproductive structures. The mycelium in asexual reproduction will produce spore-producing structures. These spores then will mature um, and germinate and produce new mycelium, and so that would be asexual reproduction. For sexual reproduction, our mycelium, uh, our, plus myce our plus hyphae and our minus hyphae are going to get together and fuse in a process called plasmogamy. And so the cytoplasm of these two structures will fuse and put our um, fungi in what's called the heterokaryotic stage. During this stage, um, the nuclei 
uh, from both of our plus and minus hyphae might not fuse. They might um, stay separate for hours, days, or perhaps even centuries. That's why it's called heterokaryotic. It's the different nuclei coexisting. In some cases, um, the two nuclei are actually going to um, separate into separate cells, but still stay unique and separate. And at that point, they're called um, dikaryotic. At the point that our two nucleus are going to actually fuse together, that's called karyogamy. And we're going to create our first diploid cell, which is going to be our zygote. The zygote then will actually reproduce by meiosis, to produce haploid cells, which will develop into spores, which then will, through germination, become more mycelium. And that will be our sexual reproduction. Now, there are several different types of fungi, and so we'll just kind of briefly go through those. The first type of fungi that we'll look, like, that we'll look at is the citrids. Citrid fungi are found in freshwater and terrestrial habitats. They can be either decomposers, parasites, or mutualists. Molecular evidence supports the hypothesis that the citrids actually diverged really early in fungal evolution. So it's the kind of the most unique of our fungi genetically. The citrids are unique also amongst fungi because they actually have flagellated spores called zoospores. Specific species of citrid fungi might actually be the cause of the recent decline in amphibians worldwide. Another type of fungi is going to be our zygomycota, or our common mold. Now, these guys are going to be primarily decomposers. They can reproduce asexually by forming specialized structures called sporangia. The sporangia are the structures on the tips of the hyphae that are going to be able to make the spores. Let's take a look at the basic reproduction of our zygomycota, starting with sexual reproduction. Within the zygomycota, we have uh, various types of mycelia, our plus and our minus. In this diagram, the plus is represented by blue nuclei, and the minus is represented by red nuclei. The neighboring mycelia of the different mating types will form hyphal extensions, uh, each of which will enclose several haploid nuclei, um, fusing um, those together in a process called plasmogamy. A zygosporangium forms, which will contain several haploid nuclei from the two parents. The zygosporangium will develop a rough, thick-walled coating that can resist harsh conditions for months. Um, the zygomycota could exist in this stage for quite some time, um, in this heterokaryotic stage, with the two nuclei being separate. When the conditions become favorable, the karyogamy will take place. Our nucleuses will fuse, followed up by meiosis. The zygosporangium could then germinate into sporangium, which then could produce spores, um, and those spores would develop into mycelia. Those same spores um, can undergo asexual reproduction, where the mycelium themselves can generate reproductive structures called sporangia, producing spores that produce new, uh, new mycelium. Our next type of fungi is going to be our basidiomycota, or club fungi. These uh, fungi have club-shaped structures called basidiocarps that produce spores. Examples of these would be like mushrooms and shelf fungi. These are very important decomposers of wood and plant material. Reproduction in our basidomycota is primarily sexual. Two haploid mycelia of different types, the plus and the minus, are going to undergo plasmogamy and fuse, forming a dikaryotic mycelium. These dikaryotic mycelium are going to grow faster than and ultimately overcrowd the haploid parents. Environmental cues, such as rain or a change in temperature, will cause the dikaryotic mycelium to form compact masses that will develop into basidiocarps, like mushrooms in this particular case. The basidiocarp gills are lined with terminal dikaryotic cells called basidia. Karyogamy in the basidium is going to produce diploid nuclei, which will then undergo uh, meiosis. 
Each diploid nucleus will yield four haploid nuclei. Each of them will develop into a basidiospore. When the mature basidiospores are ejected and then dispersed by the wind, they'll find a suitable environment in which they can germinate and grow into the short-lived haploid mycelia. The next fungi that we'll explore is the ascomycota, or sac fungi. Ascomycota produce spores in sac-like structures called asci during sexual reproduction. Some examples of ascomycota are our yeast and morels. Let's take a look at the reproduction of a typical ascomycota fungus um, by using an example that's pretty famous, which is Neurospora crossa. The ascomycota mycelia can reproduce asexually by producing pigmented haploid spores called conida. The conida then can germinate uh, to form hyphae, um, which then can form new mycelia. Neurospora can also reproduce sexually by producing specialized hyphae. Conida of the opposite mating type will fuse to this hyphae um, as a result of plasmogamy. The dikaryotic hyphae that result from plasmogamy produce many dikaryotic ASCII, two of which are shown in this diagram. When the, uh, re when the environmental conditions are right, karyogamy can occur where the nuclei will fuse, producing a diploid nucleus. Each diploid nucleus will then divide by meiosis, yielding four haploid nuclei. Each haploid nuclei will divide once by mitosis, yielding eight nuclei. Um, the cell walls and the plasma membranes are going to develop around these nuclei, forming ascopores. The ascopores are then discharged forcibly from the ASCII through an opening in the ascocarp. Germinating ascopores give rise to new mycelia, and the cycle continues. Our last type of fungus that we'll want to examine is the deuteromycota, or the imperfect fungi. These are fungi that only reproduce asexually. One of the reasons that they are of consequence is that these are the types of fungi that cause the most of the fungal diseases in humans, including things like, you know, from the TV commercials, the, the toenail fungus. Now, fungi do have a lot of potential benefits um, to the natural world. First of all, they are very important decomposers, and they help to recycle matter so that they can be brought back into um, our food chains. The fungi are also useful in producing a lot of uh, important products in the medical field, like penicillin and uh, cephalosporin and cortisone. Um, yeast are used in baking to produce uh, bread, um, and of course the fermentation um, by yeast of uh, things like um, juices can produce wine. Mushrooms and morels and truffles are widely consumed by animals and humans alike. Fungi also form beneficial partnerships or symbiosis with organisms like trees and flowers. Um, for, uh, a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and an algae forms lichen. Lichen, this symbiotic relationship, can grow on rocks and trees. Um, lichen are um, pioneer species, helping to build up soil, break down rocks, and a major component of um, ecological succession. Mycorrhizae fungi, um, they are able to assist plants in uh, increasing their root depth so that they're have, able to have more access to water, as well as uh, being able to pull in the phosphorus and give that to their host. Um, in this picture here, you can see side by side uh, one plant with and one plant without the mycorrhizae. The one with the mycorrhizae is much more healthy and much bigger um, because of its root mass. In addition to the positive impacts um, environmentally, fungi also have some negative impacts as well. Many people have allergies triggered by mold. Um, fungus can cause many types of infections, like infections of the skin, nails, and hair, like ringworm or athlete's foot. Um, fungus can actually infect us internally, causing something like histoplasmosis. In addition to attacking humans, they also attack plants, causing things like Dutch elm disease, corn smut, or ergot of rye. If humans consume uh, rye that has been infected, um, then they can have uh, hallucinogenic effects or even cause death. 
Fungi are unique and interesting kingdom of life. With further study, we can truly enjoy the richness of their diversity.